I'm Francesca Buffa, I'm a full professor of computing science applied to health and uh, uh, I work in the computing science department of Bocconi University. And what is your current research interest? I work on genes and uh, how genes function. So if we understand how a gene functions uh, in normal tissues or in development, uh, and then how it goes wrong uh, when there is a disease, um, we can try to restore that function. Right? We can try to address what has gone wrong. Um, and because genes don't work uh, in isolation, it's not just one gene function, the function is usually determined by many genes interacting together. And so um, what we do, we uh, look at these networks of genes and what is the function of these networks of interactions between genes and then how this function is disrupted in a disease um, and how to restore uh, the correct uh, rewiring of the network. Um, and if we can do this, obviously, uh, the, the hope is that whenever we can do this, we can uh, find a, a way of curing the disease. Sounds really interesting, but what has this to do with Bocconi, actually? Uh, well, it has a lot to do with Bocconi, and this is due to the complexity of the problem. Now, Bocconi is uh, uh, investing a lot uh, in artificial intelligence, has been doing this for a while, now has uh, a new department in computing sciences focuses, uh, who focuses uh, uh, in artificial intelligence and the uh, applications of artificial intelligence. And uh, artificial intelligence is key to uh, look and interpret biological data today. Um, artificial intelligence has actually been used in medicine for a long time. Uh, in the 1970s, uh, and in fact in 1975, there was uh, uh, the first workshop uh, by the National Institute of Health in the US discussing how to use artificial intelligence on medical data. Um, so why after uh, 50 years uh, we are so excited about artificial intelligence in biology and medicine? Well, because now we can measure data that at the time could not be measured. Right? At the time we had no many variables and it was more of a theoretical exercise how to use AI in medicine. Now we have uh, uh, millions of data points and uh, many variables coming from imaging but also genomics, so uh, many areas of medicine and biology. We we have uh, uh, many different variables that we have to put together uh, in a, a complex system, which is uh, uh, the biology of the human body and uh, what goes wrong in a disease. So we have a complex system, large numbers, which is the ideal territory for artificial intelligence. And in fact, without artificial intelligence and then modern computational techniques, we could not even look at this data. Uh, and of course, if we, can, we cannot look at them, we cannot interpret them, and we cannot use them to uh, improve human health. And did you discover anything? Oh yes, many discoveries. Uh, um, we are trying to simulate uh, or, uh, virtual cells and study how a cell with all this network of genes inside it works uh, when there are other cells. Right? So one can think uh, in a disease where there is a type of cell that goes wrong, how is an communication between cells uh, or uh, what drugs to give to a disease, we can now simulate this in a computer and then trying to understand if our models are good enough already or what do we need to do to make models that are uh, good uh, to use uh, for medicine. Uh, so this is something that is funded by the European Research Council and we are doing uh, at the moment right now. Sounds impressive but I suppose that when you were a kid, you didn't dream of working on artificial intelligence, did you? No, I wasn't. I, w I didn't know what it was. I was skiing a lot uh, and dreaming of being a skier, uh, like a competitive skier. Uh, I was uh, playing a lot of music and dreaming then a little bit later of being a guitarist. Uh, and then I was dreaming of being a writer at some point. Uh, but no, I wasn't. I, was, I had a lot of dreams, uh, but I didn't uh, yet see what I would do uh, when I was an adult. Uh, uh, and in fact, I saw that quite later on, yes. And so at what point in your life did you decide to become a scientist? Well, it was towards the end of high school. 
or in start of university. Uh, obviously, uh, I, I chose the subjects that I liked, so I understood I liked science and maths, so that is uh, uh, why I chose a university to do theoretical physics, because it was a good balance between maths uh, and, uh, and science. And then while I was doing that, so during my university and then the start of my further studies, I understood that I wanted to apply um, mathematical methods and computational methods to complex systems. And biology is a complex system that if we understand that we can, we can make, the, the impact is big, right? Because it's human health. So I was uh, captivated by that. Plus there was a sort of a turning point when there was uh, in 2001, the publication of the sequencing of the human genome, because obviously that gave us so much data that we could think on. Uh, we didn't know really what uh, this set of data meant at the start, so we didn't know, uh, but it was obvious that it was uh, a data that if understood and well used, could improve human health. So the application of AI and computer science, uh, uh, there is where it sort of started to really come together with the field I'm working in now. And have you met many people that proved an inspiration for you? Yes, so aside from my parents, which obviously provided uh, the uh, discussion and uh, uh, very interesting discussions when I was little, and then still now I discuss with them uh, quite a lot. But aside from that, I did have some people who inspired specific moment uh, of my career. For example, uh, meeting uh, a medic who uh, works in Oxford, the University of Oxford, where I was before to come uh, to Bocconi, who's called uh, Adrian Harris. That was uh, inspirational. Um, he's a medic and he's a researcher, so he's a, uh, he's a researcher in biology and then a doctor of breast cancer. So he's, uh, he gave me this attention to try to uh, translate everything you do in research uh, to something useful. Not always this is possible, but the tension needs to be there. So the, the, the uh, wanting to translate to something that can be useful in the clinic. So that is uh, uh, very much uh, uh, what he taught me, he told me it was possible and he told me um, how to pursue it. Uh, another person who was uh, uh, very uh, important for me is uh, a computational biologist in Cambridge, now at the University of Cambridge, um, who uh, is Simon Tavare, who was my mentor during my early uh, independent years in research, so when I was becoming a, a team leader, then an associate professor and so on, and he was instrumental in advising me because the area where I am is quite new. The interface of computer science and biology and medicine is uh, uh, with this type of data that we have now and with the complexity that we have now is quite new. And so it sort of was instrumental in, uh, in uh, showing to me that it was possible and advising me on, uh, uh, on how, to approach, uh, how to approach this. Well, thank you, Francesca, for this very interesting talk. Thank you.